gut health. So you're all here for many different reasons, but I wanted to start uh, tonight just a, with a little bit of my story so you understand where I'm coming from. So I am an emergency medicine physician and I uh, have been working as a physician for the past 20 years. I trained in um, nutrition uh, as my background because I wanted to know like a lot about health and wellness. And then I practiced medicine. You know, I followed uh, what we're taught in medical school, but I knew that there was a little something more. I knew that nutrition played a really important role in our bodies. I always had that understanding. But in 2016, I, uh, for many of you that know me, I love to travel this wonderful planet that we have. So I went to a, a great adventure in Thailand and it was just truly an incredible uh, journey. But when I got there, you know, I was traveling. So I had a little bit of, you know, stomach sickness, a little bit of diarrhea along the way. And then when I got home, I started getting this rash on my right thigh. And I wasn't sure what it was. I'm like, is it shingles? Did I pick up a little bug or something on my travels? And then in the fall of 2016, I started getting rashes on my knees and my elbows. And honestly, to me, this really looked like psoriasis. But that seemed very odd because I'd never had any skin problems my entire life. I also noticed that when I was having this rash, that my headaches would flare up. I, you know, I've suffered from migraines for years and the headaches seemed to correlate with the rash. So of course, what did I do next? So I went to see my physician. I went to my family doctor. She gave me some prescription cream to use. And then she also um, said that she would send me to a dermatologist, which I never did even get the call for the dermatologist. But um, what she did, um, I also went at that time, I said, okay, the cream, it settles it down a little bit, but it's really not taking it away. So I was trying to question what's going on. So I went to see a local naturopath because I'd heard a lot about food allergy testing. And so I had an allergy panel done and my panel showed that I was allergic to gluten, to dairy, to peas. These were like in my red zone. And then I had a lot of other foods that were in my yellow zone. So I tried all that fall of 2017, 2016. I really tried eliminating these things and my rash got better, but then it would come back. My headaches were still there coming back again. And I said, what could be going on in my body? So as part of my due diligence, um, I'm a member of a group called Functional Medicine Practitioners. So one of my colleagues had written a book called The Autoimmune Solution. And what it talked about was how we can heal our bodies through changing what we eat. So in January 2017, I followed that program. So in addition to being dairy-free, gluten-free, and free of peas, it was free of a lot of other things. And it was a tough month for me, I must admit. But after that time, it was wonderful. Within two months, my rashes had uh, disappeared. I was feeling much better. My headaches had settled down as well. And I thought, this is great. You know, I'm freed of these rashes. So life continued on, as it does for all of us, right? And then things start to come up. So you know, a few years pass, it's 2019, it's last summer. You know, I had had a lot of stress. I had been changed jobs. Um, I had been traveling again. I'd been to Morocco this time on another wonderful trip. And uh, I had some episodes of diarrhea there. And then as many of you that are out there, you know, I realized that I'm becoming a perimenopausal female and I was starting to have insomnia, some night flashes, hot flashes, and then guess what? The rash came back. But this time it was really odd. It was on my right elbow and my left foot. Um, and also I noticed that my right knee was starting to pain. Now I'd never had any knee symptoms before and I didn't damage my knee. And you know, I had my physio look at my knee and there was nothing wrong with it. But I said, there's something going on in my body. And then just before Christmas time, I noticed that my stomach was really acting up. I was having a lot of belching, a lot of gas, and I was starting to put on the pounds. So I said, okay, I reset my gut once by going through a, a really good restrictive diet. So I said in January, I'm gonna try this again. So January of 2020, um, I've been making it a habit to go alcohol-free in January, but I said, I'm gonna do the whole thing. Dairy-free, gluten-free, the whole works, I'm gonna do that again. And guess what? It worked again. And right now, it's a couple months later, my rashes are gone, my knee pain is gone, 
my headaches are better. I'm still perimenopausal, uh, but you know, my health and my skin and my gut have improved so much. So I really felt that I wanted to tell you all this story about how I was able to, to reset my gut and share my experiences with you. So I'm gonna reshare again for you. So our gut, this phrase was an aha moment for me. Our gut is our skin on the inside of our body. When I heard this by one of my uh, fellow colleagues, I was like, that makes so much sense. Of course, when we go from our lip inside our mouth, it's a continuous loop and then it comes down our bottom end and comes out the other side. So of course, it's one continuous map. So that what happens on the inside of our body is expressed on the outside of our body. Now, I had heard people talking about this for years, but it wasn't until I was able to do that twice to my own body that I said, okay, this is something that I need to share. And also we know, and I, I've come to understand that there is a lot of science to support that gut health can help to heal our bodies in many, many ways. So here we are. This is the functional medicine tree. So on this functional medicine tree, what you see is, um, for many of you that may have meditated or done yoga before, we all talk about how you feel grounded from the roots of the tree, that the roots hold you, that's your solid foundation, and then everything on the top is what happens. So when we look at how we're grounded, we look for the root cause of illness. And that's what functional medicine teaches us. We look for sleep, relaxation, exercise, nutrition, stress, relationships, and of course food, and then there's a lot of other things that can influence that in our bodies as well. So what were the contributing factors that I had for me? So I started to look back at this and I said, okay, when I was a kid, you know, I ate the dirt, that wasn't a problem because mom put us outside all the time. You know, I was born in 71. But, you know, I was on a lot of antibiotics when I was a kid. That was kind of the number one thing to do is to put your kid on antibiotics. I suffered from acne as a teenager and they put me on long courses of antibiotics again for acne. And then I was on the birth control through my reproductive ages. And the birth control pill we know for many women can cause fungal overgrowth and an increase in the number of yeast infections that you get from the changes in your hormones. I traveled a lot and I'd been to Costa Rica, Haiti several times, and I really had a lot of bad gut bugs. You know, I had had these documented on many occasions. And then when I was in my early 30s, I had my gallbladder taken out. And I realized that you know, the gallbladder is a storage site for all your digestive enzymes. And when that's gone, that often your body and your, your digestion doesn't function just as well. And also like most of you, you know, I enjoy alcohol. I like a glass of wine or two, especially when I travel. And like many of us too, there's times that we're gonna indulge in sugar. And we might indulge, of course, in processed foods. Stress has a huge role to play on it as well. And also there's genetic influences that can have a role to play on our gut health. So then I went back to, of course, our godfather of medicine, Hippocrates. And he actually said, all disease begins in the gut. Now, perhaps not all disease, because I do think there's genetic components, of course, to everything, but many diseases begin in the gut. And what we're starting to see now is that a lot of our chronic inflammatory diseases are coming because of immune dysregulation, which starts in the gut. So as I did my research, I turned to Dr. Alessio Fasano. So some of you were asking, is leaky gut real? Well, Dr. Alessio Fasano is the chief of pediatric gastroenterology. He works at Mass General Hospital for Sick Kids in um, Massachusetts. And in 2000, he turned the word leaky gut and he discovered a protein which he named zonulin. So zonulin is a, it's a series of proteins, there's a family of them, but what they do is they regulate the leakiness in the gut. So our gut is kind of like a shag carpet or a sea anemone. So a sea anemone, a shag carpet, you know at the top that they're floating around in the air, but at the base of them, they're solid. But what can happen by certain things foods that we eat, our genetics, our toxins, our exposures, it opens the walls of the gut and it allows food particles and things that are not supposed to be into our gut to arrive in our gut. 
So here's kind of a larger a diagram that you can see. This was published in August 2009. So you sometimes wonder why your family physician maybe doesn't understand about leaky gut. You know, it can take up to 10 years or more for many physicians to get information that comes through our me regular medical journal channels. You know, doctors are overwhelmed with, and, and we're busy. There's so much information that's thrown at us all the time. So, but we do know that in 2009, this was published in Scientific American. And for many of you, you know that this is a very, a very highly read publication. And so what was discussed is further, the role that zonulin takes in actually opening up these tight junctions that come through our bowel wall. And one of the things that, um, as I was kind of studying through the years and I've done some work, uh, I was fortunate, I guess, to be in Haiti during the time of cholera. And at that time, we actually saw um, cholera and the way that it would work on the body is that within hours of getting the toxin, the body would open up and it would expel all the water through the bowels and also people would vomit. And that was a toxin exposure that was opening up that zonulin. My personal experience is sometimes now when I have a coffee or perhaps a certain food that doesn't settle with me, you may notice that within sometimes 30 minutes of eating a particular food, you'll be rushing to the bathroom. That's not a normal reaction. That's zonulin working because it was triggered by something and it's opening up your gut. So the gut microbiome. Now we've heard so much about this and the gut microbiome is actually being mapped right now. There are hundreds of billions of organisms that live inside us. So this is from Nature in 2020. And I love this diagram because you see doctors uh, fishing. They're in a, a canoe. They're going through this stream because they're trying to find what is it? What is the one micro, um, the one component that's actually helping us or the one component that's hindering us. And the thing is, it's not very clear. We're still searching, but what we know now that there's a lot of contributing factors and that there's a lot of steps that we can take to help to heal our gut and to manage our microbiome. So the gut brain axis. Now this is something that you probably were aware of. We know for years that when you feel nervous, you get butterflies in your tummy, right? And maybe you run to the bathroom because you feel a little bit upset. We know the connection is there. Now, for many of us, we used to think that the connection was the, from the brain simply to the gut. But we know now that the connection goes vice versa, from the gut to the brain. And I'll have to share this because, you know, for years in Emerge, we often thought that when, in particularly, when men come to the ER department that are having the stomach flu, they are, feel like they are dying. And you know, for a while we just said it's the man flu and they just don't handle illness well. But what I realize now is that whenever you have an outbreak of diarrhea, when your bowels are not in order, that your brain is gonna feel it. You're gonna feel anxious, you're gonna feel irritable. So it's a really important key for anyone with any um, mental health related issues as well is to get their gut in order. We know, um, science has shown us, this is from the Journal of Inflammatory Bowel Disease just in 2017. This is showing the effectiveness of an autoimmune protocol diet for inflammatory bowel disease. So these are diseases like Crohn's and colitis, which most of you have heard about. And by following a protocol that was restricted of gluten, dairy, grains, and some other things for a number of um, six weeks, followed by a five week uh, maintenance period, that 70% of patients in this small study were actually able to improve their inflammatory bowel disease. And clinically, I've seen this with patients as well. Um, there are times when patients come in and, and they're not, they're on the borderline of requiring autoimmune, like these strong drugs to regulate their conditions. And some of them in the early phases have chosen to go for a natural approach, approach and they've been able to control their symptoms of Crohn's and colitis. So the gut and our mental health illness. So hold the Prozac, pass the poop pills. What, the poop pills? So this is my friend Val Taylor. Val and I went to med school together. And uh, what Val is doing is research. She's a psychiatrist and she's working out of the University of Calgary. And what she's been finding is that um, there is a link for sure between anxiety and our gut health. So she's actually giving transplants of poop 
to other patients to see if it's going to improve their mental health and wellness. Weight loss. You know, many people find that they try every diet in the world and it doesn't work. A couple years ago, I was uh, doing a presentation on the, on the elimination diet and a patient said, she's like, Dr. Keenan, I heard you talk a few years ago and I was struggling with weight loss for such a long time. And when you said that you need to reset your gut, she did that. After she did that, her weight started to drop off. Because many times we retain weight because we don't have the nutrients that we need in our body. And when we actually reset our gut, when we allow it to heal, when we remove inflammation from our body, then our body will go back into its own level of homeostasis or balance. So what conditions are altered by, and then also can be improved through gut health and through our nutrition? So we know, we've talked about Crohn's and colitis. One of the things I guess I didn't mention with Dr. Fasano that he was a researcher and is in celiac disease. So we know that celiac disease is gl gluten-based or bread-based uh, sensitivity of the gut. We know that many autoimmune conditions like lupus and multiple sclerosis, can, there's a, a role of the gut to play in these conditions. Chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. I've seen remarkable differences in these patients when they've been able to simply even eliminate gluten from their diet. There's neurologic conditions like autism, uh, ADD, even Alzheimer's, that we're starting to see the roles and associations, not only of the gut microbiome, but also even of the microbiome of the mouth. With the skin, you know, I've shared my story with you of eczema and, uh, and my psoriasis and how that was able to be healed in me by uh, resetting my gut. And with arthritis, whether it's osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, we do see that dietary changes are gonna have a big impact on those conditions. So how did I do it? So I'm sharing with you that, hey, I did it twice, you know, three years apart. So I did the 4R program. So as a functional medicine doctor, we are trained in this. This is not my uh, idea, but what we know is that when we remove the toxins, that's number one. So we remove any of the fluids that can cause inflammation. And that's what I think was wrong when I just tried to eliminate just some of those foods that were on my uh, food program when I had my allergy testing, I didn't remove enough. So this is really a whole hearty, let's remove anything that can be inflammatory. Let's replace it with healthy foods. Let's replace it with things that are full of uh, micronutrients, that food, foods that are full of polyphenols. Those are the healthy, uh, you know, red and yellow and green vegetables that we have. And then these things are gonna to help to repair our gut. For some people, and I did take supplements at the time to help me on my 21 day uh, reset challenge that I did personally. And then of course we need to re-inoculate. So we need prebiotics, we need the probiotics. Uh, we really have to get all those gut or microorganisms back in order to help as we're on that journey of resetting our gut. So what is a gut health reset? So what I did is I went for 28 days, but today, I'm gonna, next week, I'm gonna be taking you all through a journey for all of you that are willing to go on it with me. And it's gonna be a 21 day gut health reset. So it will be dairy free, gluten free, grain free, and alcohol free. So what we'll be doing is adding to our diet tons of phytonutrients that are gonna help us to heal our gut. There'll be no calorie restriction, so this is not uh, something that you have to worry about counting calories, but you'll start to recognize uh, your body awareness. So how food is affecting your body. You'll track your emotions. You'll track how you're feeling, any headaches, any skin rashes that you're experiencing, and you'll see how those start to change as you're on this three-week um, program. So during the program, we're going to talk about a lot of important things because I know tonight that I have limited time to speak with you all, but we'll be talking about SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We'll talk about non-celiac gluten sensitivity. We'll talk about a FODMAP diet that can help people with irritable bowel conditions. We'll talk about foods that have histamine, those that have nightshades. We'll talk about the vagus nerve and its role in resetting uh, our stress and also its role in resetting our gut and how it can help us to relax. So during the 21-day gut health program, 
what we'll be doing together. So you'll have a full meal plan. I know many people say that they really need the day by day. They need to know what to do and what to eat to help them along their journey. So I'll give you a full meal plan of thing, foods that I created, ate for myself, and I'll give you all my top snacks that I ate as I went through both of these times when I reset my gut. I'll give you a full complete shopping list, uh, and I'll give you a full food list of what things that you can avoid and what things that you are able to eat while you're on the program. It'll also come with tons of gut healthy recipes, and these things are super tasty too. Okay, so don't worry about that. There will be lots of taste and quality in this food that you'll be about to eat. You'll get daily gut health videos and worksheets from me. So these will be sent to you by email and also posted in your uh, private Facebook group. You'll have weekly question and answer calls with me. I know many times patients really want to share. And a lot of this information I found that when I have time one-on-one -on -one with patients, I can share it but that in a group environment that we'll all be able to learn from each other the tips and tricks to how we're dealing with resetting our gut. And also the first 10 people that will sign up for the program, I've got a three month journal, which is a great way to track all of your symptoms while you're going through this gut uh, reset challenge. So this is a program. So this is the first program I've ever launched and I'm really excited about it. What I found that in our healthcare system that we don't have enough time for doctors. And I'm sure you've all found that, that you're kind of in and out the door in just 10 minutes. So I've taken all the tips that I've learned on how I was able to heal my own body during this time, and I'm gonna share all that information with you. So I've developed this program and I'm preparing all the information. The 21 day cost for the program is $125. But for those of you that are listening in tonight, and if you use the promo code gut health, you'll be able to do the program with me for $97. I'm really trying to make this very affordable for all of you. I want as many people to start with the gut because I do know that it's one of the fundamental things that we have for health within our system. So it's gonna be an incredible journey with you. Um, a better path for me, this is for those of you that may have taken one of my in-person programs before, we know that this is a path, this is a journey. You know, I went through a gut health reset twice, and I know that there may be times due to exposures that I have that I may have to do a program again. You know, our life is changing. The knowledge that we have is changing. We're being exposed to new sources of information every day. So I look forward to you all joining me on the gut health reset program. It'll be starting on June the 1st. So I'll be sending you a link. It'll be posted on my Facebook page. And for those of you that are registered with your email, I'll send you the link by email about how you can register.